everybody's running and the world is so crazy. People work so hard, there's no time to be lazy. The weekend comes, I'm down with that. Grab your ball, grab your bat, head to the beach, grab some things. Better hurry up, just got some games. Playing games, and you're not rolling close to go down. Go to the mall, a lot of fun, it's a ride. Weekend's just starting, and guess what we have planned? Nothing. <laughs> That's right. From now till bedtime Sunday, it's just 53 hours of hanging. Pretty sweet, huh? Sometimes you gotta have a weekend where you do nothing at all. Not even bathe. Okay, uh-uh. Guys, we have to get to work. Our radio play is due on Monday. Radio play? The radio play for the KQXR contest? The radio play that could get broadcast all over town? The radio play I just signed us up to do... You signed us up to do a radio play? That's right, dudes. Prepare to enter the brave new world of radio broadcasting. I only wish I'd had an opportunity like this at your age, dude. Hey, yo Okay, this is Jan the Man at Testaverde, local DJ and top contender for the most annoying human being in existence. He spoke at assembly today and tried to sign kids up for this radio play contest. We spent most of fourth period making fun of him. Okay, dudes, best of luck at the fabulous KQXR radio contest, 7th grade division. Remember, if you're good, you could grow up to be the next Jam the Man. Hey, owls a dude. I'm sorry you had to see that. Yeah. Tish, how could you sign us up for that guy's contest without asking us? Yeah, we planned out a whole weekend of doing nothing. Not even bathing. Okay, uh-uh. Well, obviously, I would have asked you if there was a chance you'd say yes. Of course. It's all clear now. Look, I need this radio play. I was reviewing my college application folder, and I don't have anything in the broadcast art section of the drama section of the arts and culture section. Nothing at all? Come on, this will be good for all of us. Tino, one time you said you wanted to be a DJ, right? And Carver, you're always talking about becoming famous. And Laura, you... You... Well, it'd be good for most of us. You know, it does kind of sound like fun. Yeah, and how hard can radio be if Jan the Man can do it? Hey, I know what our play can be. The story of Znorf the Morph. <laughs> Menace from beyond the stars. Spreading terror and yowza wherever he goes. Yowza, dudes. Take me to your fabulous leader. <laughs> Behold his fearsome goatee thingy. Yeah. Guys, be serious. This is going to be a lot of hard work. Hard work? Uh, forget it. Yeah, hi. Weekend, hard work, bad. Well, if you'd like, I could write the script and direct and do everything. Well, yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. I'm in charge. We will meet tomorrow at 0600 hours. Lateness will not be tolerated. Do you guys have that... Horrible mistake feeling, too. Good morning, cast. I have here my very own adaptation of a novel from my parents' homeland. <clears throat> the Sea Never Says I'm Sorry by Uvar Grovla Mertist. Wow. Just hearing you say that name makes my tongue hurt. What is it, like 200 pages? I thought the place for this contest was supposed to be five minutes long. You're right. We'll have to keep the pace brisk. Anyway, let's get to it. I've moved the events of the novel to the antebellum south in order to make it more appealing to the radio audience. Oh, I hope you put in a few car chases and explosions, too. Like, pow, pow, pow. Tino, center. You play Big Ash, the aging but tyrannical patriarch of the Phillips family. Did you just say Big Ash? Lore, you are the high-strung spinster aunt LaVon, as pathetic as she is doctrinaire. Huh? Carver, you'll be Elmer Green, the charming interloper of dubious character. I can do charming. Ah, of course, will be the beautiful but reckless Celeste, who will stop at nothing to escape this bitter web of corruption. Got it? Absolutely not. Good. We're behind. Let's move, people. We're burning daylight. Scoot, scoot, scoot. After all these years, I finally feel truly alive. Um, that was great, Lore, but do you think you could try reading it with some, you know, emotion? Oh, sure, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got it. Okay. After all these years, I finally feel truly alive. Great. One more time. After all these years, I finally feel truly alive. Okay, we'll come back to this scene. Maybe. Let's move to the scene where Big Ash confronts Elmer in his study. Your attentions to my daughter are not welcome, sir. I think that's for her to decide. I am not a man to whom people say no. I am a man who would like a slice of pizza. Me too. Let's go. Ah, no one's going anywhere. We're not even off to the third dream sequence. Hey, this is a radio play, right? Indeed. Then why are we all in full costume? No one's going to see us. How can I direct if you're going to pick, pick, pick at every little decision I make? 
Query, what is my character's motivation in the fight scene? He's thinking about winning the fight. No, 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 no. That doesn't make any sense. Just read the lines, okay? <laughs> Fine. Your lordly heirs and noble heritage don't count for much now, do they, old man? Can't you see, Papa? It's over. Over. Don't fight, please, she screams. No, no, no. You're supposed to actually scream. You're terrified. This is so unprofessional. I'll be in my trailer. That's my closet, Olivier. A real actor can make the audience believe a closet is a trailer. I'm thinking we should take that pizza break. We've at least got to get to the big storm scene. Uh, look around. I think we're there. Eben, bring the shovel. Come on, come on, we've got to get back to the run-through. I can't work under these conditions. You're stifling my creativity. Hey, you were the only one who wanted to do this radio play in the first place. Now you're taking a kind of unfun thing and making it seriously unfun. Tish, I don't know if you noticed, but this isn't working. We've all had it. So you're backing out? Oh, beauty. If you guys didn't want to do this, why didn't you just say so? Um, we did. Oh, somebody has an answer for everything, does it, Shake? Look, you're in maximum control freak mode. It's too much, okay? You're the ones who wanted me to do all the work. But that doesn't mean we wanted you to boss us around. If that's the way you feel, fine. Well, on the one hand, we probably just made our best friend mad at us for life. On the other hand, we don't have to do the play. I guess it's a fair trade-off. Tish, Wait hang up. on. Look, we know this play is important to you, but it's making us miserable. Maybe we can meet each other halfway? I'm positive we can work it out. Uh, let's run through this one more time. Tish wanted to do the play. Yep. We didn't want to do the play. Yep. And now we're back doing the play. Yep. So how exactly does this qualify as meeting halfway? There's a simple answer to that question. Do you know what it is? Nope. Sorry I'm late. I was doing a few minor rewrites. Here you go. A few minor rewrites? What'd you do, cut out all the consonants? I'll need some trims. Now, let's all turn to page one, shall we? The sea never says I'm sorry. A drama in one act. Go now? Oh, okay. <clears throat> My, this is a foul winter even for Minnesota. Minnesota? Now, that southern gothic stuff is over, you know? Let's pick it up from your first line. Go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. This is a foul winter even for Minnesota, eh? After all these years, I finally feel truly alive. Golly gee, I see Levon is still under the zombie curse. Good fix, Tish. Shh. Papa, a strange ad stranger would like to talk to you, for he's just proposed to me, don't you know now? Proposed? Already? Oh, what happened to the barn burning and the carriage accident? Cut, cut, cut! I told you I made some trims. Now we have to start all over. Papa, there's a storm coming. Uh, sounds more like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> oh, sorry, forgot about your little radio thing. Hey, you guys want some tofu crunchies? No, thank you, ma'am. Whoa. Frosty. Your homespun Midwestern wisdom and ice fishing trophies don't count for much now, do they, old man? Oh, can't you see, Papa? It's over. Over. Don't fight, please. She screams. Oh, wait. Was that where I was supposed to really scream? That does it! This is impossible! I give up! I'll be in my trailer. Oh, come on, Tish. It'll be fine. No, it won't. I'm a failure. As a playwright, as a director, as an auteur... It's our fault. We should never have let you do everything yourself. It's not your fault. I wanted to do it all. I've been such a jerk. No, no, no. Well, yeah, a little. But the rest of us haven't made it any easier. Why does this have to be so hard? Why can't it just be fun? Maybe it can. Maybe all we need is a little... Hey, yowza! <laughs> Dudes, bow down before Snorf the Morph. Yeah, menace from beyond the star. <laughs> Spreading terror and yowza wherever he goes. <laughs> Seventh grade winners are Tino, Carver, Laura, and Tish. Hey, Elza! Oh, Tish! <laughs> you know what? It's so great that we won. But what's really important is that we had fun. You know, that I have something to put in the broadcast art section of the drama section of the arts and culture section of my college application folder. <laughs> and now, Tino's final thought. Yeah, Tish got kind of carried away. But she learned that a play is team effort, you know? I mean, you can't let one person do all the work. And if you do it together, it can be pretty fun. <laughs> of course, the best thing about this weekend is that Carver finally perfected his highly unflattering impression of Jan the Man. Hey, y'all, dudes! <laughs> okay, later days. <laughs>